everybody, this is Freddy with Freddy Can Fly, and in today's video, we are going to do a continuation in the series and setup videos for the Spirit 2 Fly Barless system. First video, we kind of covered just, you know, the basics, the unboxing, updating the system, getting it ready for installation. So, at this point in time, in this particular video, what we're going to do is we're going to cover the basic radio settings. Please take in mind, I am a Spectrum user, so if you're using anything else, Futaba, um, you know, any other radios out there, just make sure that you can kind of uh, decipher what it is I'm saying in between, because sometimes menus change a little bit, but, but we'll be going spec um, Spectrum for this one. Um, so we're going to cover basic radio settings, we are going to cover the installation and wiring, and then we're also going to cover the binding procedure, which is pretty straightforward. Again, I'll be using two DSMX satellites for my binding. If you're using a standalone receiver, uh, again, if you're using Futaba and S-Bus and all that other stuff, um, I'm going to go over the manual with you guys during that, that process during the video. And then one thing I wanted to talk about as well, since I am setting up a new fly barless system, I went ahead and removed, <clears throat> excuse me, I went, went, I went ahead and removed the main rotor. Um, and all the linkages and everything because I'm going to double check during the setup process I'm probably going to have to stick a swash leveling tool on my swash plate You know again as always we're, we're, we're building the foundation so we're going to be going ground up So I'm probably going to have to put my leveling tool on re-90 my servos I, I feel comfortable leaving these linkages attached because I do know from my previous fly bar systems when these centered They you know they weren't too far off so I'm not worried about them like flopping around or anything So I recommend you guys get your helicopter to this point and uh, let's jump into the basic radio settings, and then we'll jump over to the computer screen. We'll take a look at the wiring diagram so you guys can get everything wired and plugged in. Mine turned out pretty damn clean. I mean, it's not too bad. Take in mind, I had it wired for a Beast X system, so I did have to kind of rearrange a couple of things without, you know, ripping the whole heli apart. But these Tron machines are so easy to wire. I think it turned out great. So grab your radio, guys, and let's go ahead and take a look at the radio setup. Alrighty, you guys, so at this point, let's go ahead and let's take a look at what I would consider the uh, the basic radio settings. Most of the programming is going to be done, of course, within the um, the PC software. So, like most fly barless systems nowadays, a lot of the things in the transmitter are somewhat disabled. So, let me go ahead and power on, of course, if we're using Spectrum, we'll want to enter into, you know, like our model select menu here. And, of course, we do want to make sure... If you're, if you're using a new model, go ahead and take the time to, to name it and do everything else that way. But I'm using my Tron 5.5. Uh, now, I didn't have to do a model reset, although that's not a bad idea. Um, again, flying from the Beast X going to the Spirit 2, there's not that many differences within the radio. So I didn't have to go in and do a complete memory wipe, just kind of change a few things. Um for the base setup. So, um, as always, model type I do have selected as helicopter. If you do change that, it will wipe your model. Um, go ahead and name it if you need to. Swash type I have, um, I consider this one of two things. I consider it basically disabled, but I know the proper term for it is, is normal or, you know, one servo 90, depending on the radio you have. Okay, you don't want to go in and select all this stuff because um, the software is going to ask us what our CCPM setup is, and it's going to use the software's configuration, not the transmitters, okay? So make sure you're at normal, disabled, or one servo 90, whatever your particular radio specifies, okay? Um, next up, again, if you are a Spectrum user, you'll want to make sure you enable and toggle on all your flight modes. Uh, make sure that your throttle hold and everything is active. As you guys can see there on my switches are working everything looks good okay so that's set up and good to go um, other than that there's not much to do in here um, we don't need to reassign any channels at least thus far that I know of if we run into it during programming of course we will revisit that uh, trims you don't need to worry about so basically that's all you guys are looking to do um, so just make sure your flight modes are set up um, Make sure you have the heli model, and basically the most important part is the swash plate or the CCPM configuration. Once that is done, as always, most things usually default within the Spectrum radio, but I like to double, triple check everything, because that's kind of how I work. Um, none of these menus should be bothered. As always, you're going to want to make sure what I do, 
if you have a motor plugged in that's connected to a functioning electronic speed controller, we don't want to have any spool ups by accident. Um, I did remove the main rotor so we're safe, but I still have the tail rotor and tail blades on. So what I usually do is I take my normal mode and I'll just I'll just zero it out completely. That way, you know, when I'm moving my throttle around, there's there's no way the model can spool up. You can go ahead and unplug the motor if that's easier. And then don't worry about one or two, you can zero those out, but I'm gonna be using a hobby wing governor. So I'm just gonna leave these fixed until I'm even I'm not even close to that point yet. So normal mode, I'm gonna zero that out on throttle just to stay safe. Pitch curve, you wanna make sure that you have everything linear. 0, 25, 50, 75, 100, or in some radios it might just be 0, 50, 100. Just, you know, again, translate that as appropriately as possible. Um, I do believe from what I read, and again, we haven't gotten into the gyro setup and stuff yet, but for pre-programming on the radio, um, most of the time when you start a new model, the gyro will be INH or inhibited. If you want to, go ahead and turn it on now, because I do believe with the Spirit 2 it's going to use the same point system. You know, negative 100 to 0 is going to be rate mode, 0 to positive 100 heading hold mode. Don't quote me on that yet. Again, we're going to get into the programming. However, I went ahead and enabled mine, and I just tied it to my flight mode switch. And I just set it to 32 for now. We'll see what that does when we get into it. You can leave it in, uh, inhibited for now if you wish, um, but if you want, go ahead and activate it. And then I do believe, which we'll get into this with programming again, um, I, I'm not sure if they use the gear channel for the gain output or if it's going to be the aux 2 or something. So maybe leave this inhibited until we get into it, but we can always come back and make corrections if we need to. Um, governor, again, inhibited. We don't need that. I'm going to be using my Hobby Wing Governor. Um, if you're going to be using the Governor from the Spirit 2 for like a Nitro or something, that's also done within the programming, I do believe. So just don't worry about anything Governor related. Do, 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 and there we go. So we're good. That's going to be our basic radio setup. The majority of the programming is now going to turn in um, to the PC. So make sure your radios at this point, if you're using a Spectrum setup, um, if you're using any other radio, again, just, just kind of make sure that you've got everything set up uh, as appropriately as possible. Okay, so um, we're done with that step. Let's go ahead and jump over to the computer. Let's take a look at the wiring diagram and let's make sure that the, the unit is completely installed correctly and wired up. From there we can move on to the buying process. Okay guys, so jumping over here real quick to the computer screen, you'll see that I've got loaded up the website, right? Spiritsystem.com. Because what we're going to want to do is we're going to, let's look through the manual and look for the wiring diagram and the installation portion. Now, I've got it pulled up here. Again, if you go to download and helicopters, it'll bring you over to it. Now, an important thing to look at, though, is, okay, so once we jump over here to helicopters, this will be where your software and firmware is. We went over this in the first video. Um, but I actually got a little bit confused on this one because the manual, they have the version 3.1.0, which we flashed our model up to. Then they've got PDF here for 2.7.1. It kind of confused the heck out of me, but what I found out that you had to actually do is you come right here, so you'll click on this little little globe thing, and now it's going to bring you to this setup right here. Take in mind, if you come over here and click on PDF download, it's still downloading the 2.7.1, not giving you the 3.0 version, so you got to kind of stick onto the web page. At least that's what I figured out thus far. If I'm wrong, please feel free to, to you know correct me by any means. Uh, but this is going to kind of give you the, the glossary of everything. So we're going to want to go into our manual. Now we are using Spirit 2. So let's click this link. It brings us right into our manual. Pretty easy. And it gives us right here version 3.1.0. We want to make sure that everything is um, compatible as far as the, the menus we're entering into and everything. We want to make sure that nothing's incorrect. So make sure you're rocking the right version. Uh, contents, you know, we really, guys, if you want to go over safety and introduction, please feel free to do, uh, do so. Um, installation, I think, is pretty easy and straightforward. I mean, you, you hard mount the, the unit. Looks like it can be flat, pins forward, pins backwards. On the side, pins forward, pins backwards. Um, pretty easy stuff there. But getting into the wiring, this manual is pretty in-depth. It's got a lot going on. So we want to make sure we pay attention. Um, 
this unit in particular has a couple of different features. It can actually be used as a standalone gyro for a fly bar helicopter, which is pretty freaking sweet. So it'd be a tail gyro. You can go full out fly barless, so three access. You've got you've got your swash plate and the tail, which is also pretty dang cool. And then, so if you go through the contents here, you can kind of see, you know, click on which link that it is that we need to get familiar with. For me, I'll just kind of scroll down here. Um, as always, it does have it listed on here, but you want to make sure that your connector orientations are correct. It does have it listed on the Spirit 2. Um, essentially, black wires are down, white wires are up. In this case, they have a little bit of a different color setup. But, servo wiring and servo mapping. Uh, if you guys recall, in the last video, they do have everything pre-programmed at a 1520 um, and then also at 50 hertz for the frequency. A lot of servos out there nowadays are, are either going to be okay with that for the initial um, plug-in or you're going to want to change it beforehand. I recommend changing it beforehand. So I was using BK on my Cyclics. I have it set to 1520 and 333 hertz on the frequency, whereas on my rudder, I had to drop it down to 760, but 333 hertz on the frequency. So make sure you guys change those before. That way when you plug everything in and bind up and power up, you just don't risk causing any damage to your electronics or your servos. Um, if you choose not to, I don't really think there's a lot of chance for harm, but never hurts to be on the safe side, okay? So we're getting into the servo wiring. So you've got your unit installed. Again, I'm using DSMX satellites on mine um, and a spectrum-based radio. So we want to make sure we're looking out for the proper setup. And then uh, we'll get into that in a moment because it kind of talks about it a little bit here. But as far as plugging everything in, so we've got the Spirit 2 right here. If you guys are using, you know, Spirit Pro or anything different, here's your diagram. Now, here's one thing that, that I thought was interesting. And as we look at this, I want to look down here. So the way mine is set up is I've got the unit installed with the pins facing towards the tail, so towards the back. Uh, but it does say right here like a little, you know, hey, the more you know kind of a thing. But it's basically saying that servos at position channel 1 and channel 3, and that is basically going to be your pitch and or aileron. Um, depending on your swash plate settings, it's saying that the aileron servo is, is usually positioned on the right side of the model, pitch on the left. In my case, I usually um, will follow these instructions and they usually work out. So what I actually did on mine is on channel 1, which is going to be, in my model, it's on the left side, is my, my pitch servo. Boom. So I went ahead and put pitch into the, the channel 1 port and that actually turned out to be my left side servo. Everything works great. I don't have to do any servo reversing. Channel 3, aileron, I did actually plug in my right side servo. Everything works great. No servo reversing. Uh, channel 2 will be elevator. Pretty simple. And then channel 4 will be your rudder or tail servo. So get that plugged in accordingly and then we can move on real quick to the ESC. Now, since I'm using a Hobbywing ESC, and I know a lot of the other Hobby, or not Hobby Wings, but a lot of the other ESCs out there have like that double redundancy kind of setup nowadays where you've got the ESC lead, and then if you've got the built-in BEC, you've got another black and red cable coming out just to give you kind of a double connect, connection setup. So ESC setups here, um, of course it gives you some, some flags here. If you're using um, Spectrum satellites, you must always connect power to the unit. Um, yada 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 but it goes through some of the stuff here as far as like if you're using different ESC's and different throttle servos but what I'm more looking at is the connection and where does my throttle plug into and if I'm using double redundancy where does that go so let's look through the manual here and you'll see that it lists three different setups for each receiver type so this is a standard receiver right here um, it's gonna list the three different or four different models I think that was we're not looking for that though we don't need it um, Spectrum, DSM-2, and DSM-X. So here's where we want to be in my case. Uh, if you're using something different, just keep going through the manual here. So Spectrum, DSM-X satellite, that's not my model, that's not my model, that's not, there it is, boom, okay. So obviously we've got our primary and secondary satellites plugged in. For our throttle signal, 
And this is this is important, guys. This is going to come into the binding stuff, which is up next here. So our throttle needs to be plugged into auxiliary one. Okay, that's going to be the important part. Aux one is throttle, so that'll be your black, red, and white. Uh, or any other variation of colored cable that you have, that's going to see your throttle signal. Now, if you've got a double redundancy cable, and in some cases, um, these ESCs have that separate yellow wire, which, which is for governor sensing and stuff, you've got two different optional aux ports here. You've got aux 2 and then rudder, which I was kind of confused at that for me. I was like, okay, wait a minute, that, that, that's got to be for a rudder. So, if you read on a little bit here, um, it's going to specify everything that you need right here. So connection to a BEC is optional. If the model is powered by an external BEC, which ours is not, um, it can be connected to the rudder port or RUD port. Um, the power lead from the ESC's internal BEC, however, um, would be disconnected at that point. So this would be like if you're if you're rocking a, a a separate BEC from the one that you've got within your ESC. I guess it's kind of complicated there. But just think of it this way, guys. Your throttle must be plugged in. I guess I can't highlight that, can I? Your throttle must be plugged in um, to the aux one. That's your signal wire. And what I did is I actually just plugged in my double redundancy cable to the RUD or rudder port here. And then a little yellow wire, just to make sure it wasn't hanging out and taking up wasted space, I went ahead and just slid it right into the aux two. It's not going to do anything, but it just it makes it a little more compact, okay? So make sure you notice that. Second thing, you should, well, I guess I guess at this point you should have everything wired up, right? We went through our channels 1 to 4. We now know where our throttle goes in. If we've got double redundancy, we can plug it into either or, aux 2 or rudder. Um, so the next thing to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to get everything bound up. Now this I thought was pretty interesting and I think if you didn't read the manual and you just assumed you knew everything about helicopters you might goof right here because they've caught two different binding ports for two different frequencies here on the satellites. If you tried to bind through the SYS or system port here you're trying to set yourself up for DSM-2 whereas if you put the bind plug into the, the elevator pitch aileron port here it's going to bind you for DSMX. Um, it does specify somewhere in here, I forget where, um, right here. So be sure receiver type in the software is configured to the proper one, otherwise binding process will fail, right? So if I were to try to be binding for DSMX but I plug in here, it's going to fail, you're going to get frustrated, you're going to scratch your head and think the system's a piece of junk and probably call all your friends and post stuff online about it. So. Make sure, guys, this is a big one here, because I almost, I won't lie to you guys, I almost did that same exact thing. I threw a bind plug in, and I was like, hey, I'm ready to go, but then I started reading and learning, and I was like, oh, almost made a goof, okay? So, that's basically it, guys. We should have everything wired up. We should have everything successfully installed and ready for the binding procedure. So let's jump back over to the machine real quick, and let's get it all bound up. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen. At this point in time, we're going to go ahead and complete the binding procedure uh, for the Spirit 2. So now, like we just talked about on the computer screen there, we've got two different options for our binding for spectrum-based radios, take in mind, is we've got the system port, which is going to be used for DSM-2 binding, and then we've got the elevator, pitch, and aileron port, which will be for DSM-X. Uh, you can't see the other side here, but I'm using two. DSMX satellites. So I'm going to go ahead and take my binding plug, slip it right in there, take in mind orientation and, and everything like that. I don't really think it matters with a binding plug, but you know, just keep everything uniform, I guess. Now, binding process is, is a little bit similar to just about everything else out there. I'm going to go ahead and connect my main power supply. Um, this should activate and we should enter into a blinking status. So let's go ahead and do that. As always, use the proper cautions. Make sure you have no throttle applied. Make sure the motor can't spool up or anything crazy like that. So let's go ahead and power up. Okay. Give it a quick sec. All right, so we've got a solid blue status LED. Hopefully you guys can see that there. Let's zoom out a little bit. Um, but I am flashing on this side, and I am also flashing on that side, indicating we're ready to bind, okay? 
So I'm going to go ahead and take my Spectrum radio and as always just hold down the bind key and power up the radio at the same time. So on mine, my bind button's right up here and then I'll toggle on. What I like to do though guys is I turn my back to the helicopter and I point my radio away. Okay, so let's see if we can get it go through the bind process here real quick. We'll know it's completed once the satellites go solid. And also with Spectrum, the radio will signal bind complete. So now you'll notice we're sitting solid. Okay, that's good. But if you move any of your sticks, you'll notice you have absolutely no control over the machine. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a real quick power cycle. And then uh, we'll power back up, or I guess that's kind of the same thing. We'll, we'll power cycle the system. Let me go ahead and unplug. Now, of course, you want to make sure, turn off our radio. Go ahead and remove your bind plug. Boom. Get that out of the way. And then what we're going to do is, is let's power it back up and let's just kind of see what our overall result is as far as how everything just kind of works right out of the bag. Okay, I haven't done any programming yet to this system. However, with some of the earlier changes we made and following the instructions appropriately, let's just kind of see if anything's, you know, all skawampus or if, if we've got everything pretty spot on. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and power up real quick. Okay, let's make sure satellites should go solid. I'm going to give this system a quick second. I don't, yep, it does jumps, which is kind of cool. Okay, so that's good. So you can see here, solid on the satellites on both sides. Okay, everything looks good. Now, just for the heck of it, let's see. Let's see if our collective is mixing appropriately. And holy hell, yes it is. Okay, so up is up, down is down. All three servos are in sync with each other. Pretty dang cool. Uh, rudder is working and holy hell the rudder is actually in the right orientation as well so that's cool uh, let's go forward elevator boom okay servos are mixing uh, let's go right let's go right aileron yeah nice okay cool so so far just kind of bench testing everything everything seems to be working right everything's plugged in correctly We've got everything in the right channels, uh, uh, or the right slots, if you will. So now, what we're going to do in the next video series is we're ready to go ahead and plug in our patch cable and start programming the system to do what we want it to do. Um, let me check. I want to check the gyro correction real quick. No way. Ah, uh, no. Okay, there we go. First flaw. Gyro correction direction is right for elevator but it's wrong for aileron so if you were to just take this out and fly it right now which you you really couldn't i mean i guess you could try but it'd flip right over so um alrighty guys as always thank you so much for watching follow me on the very next video we're going to begin the actual programming process get this bad boy set up and we'll get it out and get some test flights done um follow me on the next video you guys again thank you so much for watching remember freddie can fly so can you